Hi everybody, very 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 good evening and a warm welcome to you Vedantu J English channel. What's up, what's up, how are you all? Are you all able to see me and hear me? I am not able to see myself yet. So just a second. Um, yeah, now I can see myself. Yes, yes, yes. 17:30 means 5:30 p.m. only. Yes, Vinayak. What's up, guys? Very, very good. Very good evening. I'm just uploading the PDF. It's just taking a little bit of time. Yes, I had done everything, but at the at the right moment when I was just about to start the class, like two minutes before the class, what happened is the OBS setup went havoc. So <laughs> that's why I'm a little late. So quickly call up your friends, everybody. Let's start with the session because today I am going to also tell you about the topics that have been repeated how many times. It's going to be very, very important topic and it's going to be very essential for your April attempt. If you want to score more, then these are the topics that you have to study more. So I will be telling you about most repeated questions, most repeated topics as well okay so you will know that which are the topics that you have to focus more on to get a better percentile especially if 99 percentile is your aim then yes that is exactly what you are supposed to do okay now everybody all the students those who are new to the channel do not forget to subscribe to Vedantu and Light because this is the only official channel where JEE, BITSAT, VIT, EMSAT, all of these exams are taken care of. All of these exams are catered to you and absolutely all in English. Yes, absolutely all in English. No other languages, my dear students. So this is the only channel where English is where is is what we take care of okay all right now let's begin our session what do you all say let's begin our session very good evening guys hi asp asp i won't be able to answer that there are certain changes that are happening in vedantu so um, not very sure when we will be uh, starting with roman i think max to max half an hour not more than that because uh, like I said, like I always tell you, time is of uh, essence, isn't it? You know what? Let's write it down here. Time is of essence. Okay. Always remember this. Time is of essence. Time is of essence. Okay. It's time that is going to make sure that we get our exam done properly, isn't it? Time is of essence. Remember this always. Okay. All right. So let's begin. What do you all say? Let's begin. Yes. I am good. Bless you. I'm good now. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking. I'm much, much, much better. Really worried about organic. I hope there. Yes, there are. I'll tell you. Okay. So let's begin with the first topic for today. That is mole concept and stoichiometry based question. And guess what? How many times? These questions have been repeated. Mole concept and stoichiometry based questions have been repeated 15 frigging times, my dear students. 15 times from, uh, you know, from, from, I, I don't know when, but this is the most repeated type of, you know, most repeated type of question. So please make sure that mole concept and stoichiometry based question are something that you are dealing with always. Okay. And yes, this is a full full syllabus. This is a full syllabus, my dear student. This is going to be related to full syllabus. Don't worry about it. Sandeep, I'm much better now. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for asking. Okay. Yes. Okay. So shall we start? Let's begin with our first question. Our first question is Galena. Galena, you know. Galena is an ore of lead, if you remember, yes. Galena is an ore which is partially oxidized by passing air through it at high temperature. And after some time, what happens is the passage of air is stopped. But the heating is continued in a closed furnace such that the content undergoes self-reduction. The weight in kg of plumbum that is lead produced per kg of oxygen consumed is so this is an integer type question that you will have to answer shall we solve it guys let's solve it everybody yeah so uh, how would we write it down first thing is in presence of oxygen right you know what let me make it better make it bigger huh. so in presence of oxygen In presence of O2, what is happening? Can somebody tell me the uh, chemical reaction? 
can someone tell me the chemical reaction guys i'm watching your uh, chat i'm watching your chat here tell me the video is not clear guys uh, for the video to be clear please go to the youtube top most corner top right corner of youtube there will be a setting sign click on the setting sign go to advanced setting and then change the pixel to 480p or 720p i have also logged in and i can see myself pretty clearly everybody okay i can see myself pretty clearly so just do that it's actually your internet problem not mine but yes you can do this okay thank you arudran thank you so much yeah i can see myself absolutely clearly so basically what you have to do is see when you click on it the top right corner here is a setting sign click on the setting sign see it will come as quality so click on the quality then click on advanced and then click on 480 720 or 1080 that will get sorted okay that will get sorted chal all right guys so presence of oxygen yeah can somebody tell me presence of oxygen what will be the reaction nobody is telling shankar focus on chemistry right now focus on uh, uh, focus on chemistry acha very good okay let's write it down the uh, answer would be 2 pbs right plus yes 3o2 will give us 2 pbo plus what 2 pbo plus 2 so2 right now in the question it also says that after some time the passage of air is stopped but the heating is continued okay heating is continued such that the content undergo such that the content undergoes self reduction so that means even in self reduction there will be a reaction that is happening so in case of self reduction what will happen my dear student anybody <laughs> reduction i won't be able to remove it now yeah yeah self reduction what will happen guys yes no one is telling anything i need the answers people if you are not solving with me then how will how will you solve it okay so in self reduction this will happen and in presence of oxygen this is the reaction okay correct this much have we understood this much have we understood yes okay now what is going to happen is now we have to calculate so we see that we see that 3 o2 yes 3 moles of o2 is giving us 3 pb am i right am i right guys am i right actually gopi you know it you just have to think about how to solve it okay how to solve it so we see that 3 moles of o2 is giving us is giving us 3 moles of pb do we see that everybody do we see that guys i have underlined it yes so that means that means now o2 so 3 into 3 into 32 yes that's the that's the atomic weight of oxygen correct guys correct yes 32 into 3 is equal to what 96 g right so 96 g of o2 produces how much guys produces how much everybody will produce now 3 moles of pb what is the what is the atomic mass of pb 207 okay do remember this 3 into 207, which is equal to do the calculation, everyone. Do the calculation. 3 into 207 and tell me the answer, guys. 3 into 207 and tell me the answer. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Satish, I do not understand what you are writing in Telugu, but I cannot speak Telugu. It will be great for me if you can write it in English or in Hindi. I cannot understand Telugu. I'm so sorry. I I'm I'm not uh, you know from the southern part of India. okay yeah guys what's the answer very good roman 621 yes 621 g of pb that's what we will get okay now because i don't have space enough so i'm going to this yeah now oh this is also given here see this is also given here pb is equal to 207 great acha so that means so 
वन के जी और लेट्स से थाउजेंड ग्राम यस थाउजेंड ग्राम यस थाउजेंड ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विल प्रोड्यूस हाउ मच दिस इज वॉट इट इज आस्किंग नो द वेट इन के जी ऑफ पी बी प्रोड्यूस पर के जी ऑफ ओ टू कंज्यूम्ड इज सो वन के जी और थाउजेंड ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विल प्रोड्यूस हाउ मच will produce basically what we have to do is see from here we found 621 621 divided by 96 right as per the question so 621 divided by 96 into multiplied it with 1000 obviously 1000 now calculate this and tell me what is the answer i'm not going to calculate that will be your answer guys tell me tell me tell me tell me tell me quickly go 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 Yes, six twenty one divided by ninety six into thousand. Come on, Roma and Sandeep, somebody answer. No one is answering. Guys, quickly calculate. Quickly calculate, everybody. Also, quickly call up your friends. Yeah, where are they? They are not serious about J this time. It seems, huh? What happened? You guys are not appearing for JE or what? Are you only appearing for board exams? Late? Yes, you are a little late, but no problem. Now that you are here, quickly calculate this: six hundred and twenty-one divided by ninety-six into thousand. Chalo, let's not waste time. That will be your answer. Okay? This will be your answer. This will. This is what you have to write it here. Okay? Let's go to the next question. Chalo, next question is. For the reaction I minus plus ClO3 minus plus H2SO4 gives Cl minus plus HSO4 plus I2. Now they are asking that the correct statement in the balanced equation are in the balanced equation we have to find out that what are the correct statement. Acha. So how will we approach this? First of all, we have to balance this equation because this is not balanced, right? It doesn't look balanced, so we have to balance it. Now we see that see. I minus is getting converted to I two. I minus is getting converted to I two. Do you see it? Do you see it? So let's write it. Okay, let's write it down here. Initially, let's start with the oxidation half. Oxidation half. What is the oxidation half, guys? The oxidation half is two I minus. Yes, will give you I two plus Two e minus, and let's consider this to be equation one. Can we do that? Can we do that, everybody? Yes, yes or no? Sandeep, we do provide you the PDF in the Telegram channel, Swetha. So please don't forget to uh, join our Telegram channel. I will also show you how to join our Telegram channel. Yes, you get all the PDF in the Telegram channel every single day, every single session. Okay, all right. So this will be our oxidation half. Now let's also write the reduction half. Acha. Now if this is the oxidation half, do you also realize that iodide is oxidized? Do we see that that iodide is oxidized? See, I minus to I two, and I just told you that that's the oxidation part. That's the oxidation part. So iodide is oxi oxidized. Option two seems to be uh, making sense. Option two seems to be making sense. Right. Absolutely right. Chalo, moving on. Let's write down the reduction half. Okay, the reduction half here is my dear student. Yes, six H plus plus ClO three minus. Okay, plus six E minus will give us. What is the question? Wait a second. Will give us. Okay, will give us Cl minus plus three H two O. And this we will consider to be our equation two. Okay, all right. Now, now everybody, what will happen is, see, we can see that the 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 numbers are not making any sense, right? Here there is two, here there is six. So because it is six here and here it is two, so can we multiply by three? The equation one, let's multiply by three. Multiply by three. Equation one. And Add equation two. That way we will get the whole equation. Am I right, everybody? That way we will get the whole equation, guys. 
Guys, please interact. Yeah, no one is interact. This gets boring. No one is interacting. So what will we get? Two into three to so six i minus, right? Yes, six i minus. Then we will add this plus c. Sorry, plus ClO three. ClO three minus. Okay. Yes. Plus. Plus 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 six H plus as we can see here, okay, six H plus. This will give us this will give us Cl minus plus three I two. Am I right? Three I two. Yes. And then here it is three H two O. So let's write this three H two O. Yes. Yes, everybody. Great. Okay. Now this means from this reaction, okay, from this reaction that I've just noted down, from this reaction we understand that it means that six i minus plus ClO three minus plus six H two SO four. That's the case. Yes, that's the case, everybody. And this side, on the product side, we are getting three i two plus three H two O, right? Plus Six H S O four minus. Am I correct? From here, I understand that the that the stoichiometry that the stoichiometric coefficient will be six for H two S O four. Yes, that means that the stoichiometric coefficient of H S O four is also six. Am I right? And do I also notice that H two O is a product here? H two O is a product here. That means that my option D H two O is one of the product. This also makes sense. So that means my options that are correct is one, two, and four. Yes, bacha, these are JEE advanced question, but who knows? It might come in your JEE mains also. Okay, it's not too tough. It's not too tough, as you can see, right? So one, two, and three. These are my correct answer, and that's exactly what is written here. Makes sense, everybody? Makes sense, my dear student, or no? Makes sense? Nonsense. Makes sense, nonsense, guys. No one is telling me anything. Chalo, let's go to the next topic. Okay, like next topic. The next topic here is atomic structure, quantum number. In the last session, also uh, I was telling you that atomic structure is a very important chapter, and quantum number has been repeated twelve times, my dear students, in the exam. So not a topic that we can just take it for granted, isn't it? Twelve times if it has been repeated, then there are chances that it will get repeated this time as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the question here. The question is the quantum number of four electrons are given below, and the correct order of their increasing energies will be. What are the correct order of their en increasing energy? In fact, the hint is right here. Although it's not a part of the question, but I've written the hint. The hint is. Smaller the value of n plus l, n plus l. Okay, if you add n and l, principal quantum number and l. Okay, smaller the energy of two or more suborbits have the same values of n plus l. Suborbits with lower values of n has a lower energy. Yes, so that means that that means that number four. This will have a lesser energy. Then this will also have lower energy. Yes. Then it will be number three. Then it will be number three, and then it will be number one. Right. So which means that option C is our correct answer. As per this, what did we learn? We learned that n plus l when you do and the value is small, then the energy of two or more suborbits have the same values of n plus l as we can see. Energies of Energies of two or more suborbits have same values of n plus l, right? Yes, we can see that. Now, suborbits with lower values of n will have lower energy. So, with this statement, we figured that option C seems to be correct. Yes, option C seems to be correct. Does it make sense, everybody? Is this clear, guys? Is this clear? Next question is, my dear student, ionization energy and electron gain enthalpy. I have told you so many times that in periodic property, ionization energy and electron gain enthalpy are two topics that comes every time, and it has been repeated eight times, my dear student. So eight times is not a joke, right? Eight times means that we will definitely have to focus. Correct? We will definitely have to focus. Make sense? Yeah. So, 
Our next question is, our next question is, my dear student, consider the element Mg, Al, S, P, and Si. Okay, that means magnesium, aluminium, sulfur, yes, P and Si, silicon. The correct increasing order of their first ionization enthalpy is, this is so simple, guys, so, so, so simple. Yes, so very simple, everybody. Can somebody tell me? Can somebody tell me? Of course, the correct answer is option option two. Why? Because in general, we know that from left to right, when you move in a period, what happens? Ionization enthalpy increases. Yes, ionization enthalpy increases. Why? Because effective nuclear charge increases. Right? Effective nuclear charge increases. Why? Because the number of protons also increases, isn't it? Yes. Now, because of extra stability of half-filled and full-filled electronic configuration, what happens? The required ionization enthalpy is a little more from the neighboring elements. And that is why the first ionization enthalpy for aluminum and uh, aluminum decreases, whereas for P, it increases. All right. So, this is the scenario. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Yes. Is this clear? Is this clear, guys? Let's go to the next question. Okay. The next question says the correct order of electron gain enthalpy. This has come in J May in February 2021. So not even kidding. It is, it is, you know, very recent, right? In the last two years, this question has come. So the correct order of electron gain enthalpy is sulfur as the highest one, isn't it? Then comes selenium, then comes tellurium, and then comes oxygen. Oxygen is oxygen. Because of its very small size, oxygen's electron gain enthalpy is very less. Yes. So it is definitely option one. Correct? Yes. Correct? Absolutely. Chalo, moving on to the next topic. And the next topic is Vesper theory and hybridization. My goodness, my dear student, look at it. 17 times. That means that it is a sure, short topic you will definitely get a question from vesper theory and hybridization please do not skip it make sure that you have studied very well okay vesper theory is 110 percent it is going to come in your exam this time as well so make sure that you have studied very 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 well okay all right everybody so moving on from here okay let's take a look at it the correct statement among one two three are valence bond theory cannot explain the color exhibited by transition metal complexes absolutely this is true this is true valence bond theory could not explain the color exhibited and that's why we had to move towards the different uh, theories right we had to move towards cft we had to move towards mot isn't it valence bond theory can predict quantitatively the magnetic properties of transition metal complexes aha no this is false right valence bond theory cannot distinguish ligands as weak and strong field ones absolutely true this is also correct so that means that our answer is, what is our answer guys? 1 and 3 only, right? Option 4 is the correct answer. Am I right? Am I right? Option 4 is the correct answer, isn't it? Option 4 is the correct answer, right guys? Makes sense, nonsense. Why is there no chat? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Sleeping or what? 5 o'clock it is. It's a study time, guys. <laughs> study time. Where are you? See, the moment I asked you to wake up, you guys left the session only. Hello, Abjivan. Makes sense. Got it. Clever, clever boy. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. Okay, shall we move on? Shall we move on to the next question then? Chalo. This we are done with. This we are done with. And yes, we are correct. See, option four is the correct answer. Woohoo. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Amazing. Okay. Next, next topic is molecular orbital theory. Molecular orbital theory when it is compared with Vesper theory is a little less repeated. However, nine times is again no joke. So, we will complete one question. Okay. Let's do a question. The question is 2 pi and half sigma bonds are present in low man. What an easy question. What an easy question. 2 pi and half sigma bond is of course option 3 and 2 plus. If you want, here is the molecular orbital as well. The molecular, or the energy order is also given, which you can go through later on. But some of the molecular orbital, the some of the molecular orbital energy order, you will have to remember. The tips and tricks I actually taught you when I was taking three chapters in a day, if you remember. Do you remember, guys? 
I had taken this uh, session. Let me show you if you don't remember. Let me go to YouTube. Let me go to YouTube and let me show you. Hannah. Here. Uh, taken it live. And uh, where is it? 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 Yeah. Chemical bonding. Yes. In this session, guys, in this session, I have taken you through it. Okay. In this session, do you see? Atomic structure, chemical bonding and periodic properties. This session, I have taken you through this molecular orbital theory as well. And I have told you some of the tips and, trick, please, uh, tips and tricks. Please watch it. Okay. It will help you. Also, here is a short that I uploaded yesterday. Three organic reaction, Woods Fittick reaction, Woods reaction and Fittick reaction I have taken together in just one minute. And here also I have shared with you the tips or the trick how to remember these three reactions. Please go and watch it. It will definitely help you. Okay. It will definitely, definitely help you, my dear student. You can watch it. It will only take you one minute that's it and you can save it so that just before your exam if you want to revise the organic reaction this will be an easy way to do it okay all right everybody so let's move ahead let's move ahead okay n2 plus is the correct answer okay moving on to the next topic that is coordination chemistry in coordination chemistry also the spin magnetic moment is a topic it's which is very important Spin magnetic moment topic is very important and it has been repeated nine times, my dear student. Yes, nine times it has been repeated in the past. So let's check out one question. The question is, the pair having the same magnetic moment is atomic number chromium 24, manganese 25, Fe 26 and CO 27. Okay. So CR is, uh, CR is 24, right? 24 means what? 3D5, 4S2, 4S1, 3D5, 4S1 correct okay and uh, it says that cr2 plus cr2 plus that means it will be 3d4 that means four unpaired electrons four unpaired electrons am i correct yes four unpaired electron now check it out fe is what 26 26 means 3d6 4s2 yes now fe2 plus means that uh, it will be 1, 2 gone. So, 3D6. Now, 3D6 will also have 4 unpaired electron, isn't it? 3D6 will also have 4 unpaired electron. Am I right, guys? Absolutely. 3D6 also 4 unpaired electron. And that means that these two will have the same magnetic moment. Absolutely correct. You guessed it right. Isn't these questions very easy? That's why I keep telling you that inorganic question will consist at least 30% of the whole chemistry paper. Don't skip inorganic chemistry. It's very easy to solve. And I know that this is my expertise. I have taught you very well. I have worked hard on inorganic chemistry. I have, may I have made sure that I tell you each and everything how to remember inorganic chemistry. So make sure that you study well. You, you can get the marks, my dear student. Four marks, four marks, four marks and 30% of the whole chemistry paper. Makes a lot of sense, isn't it? 9% nine, 9 and 9% are only from coordination chemistry and periodic properties. You know it. Everything is just established right in front of you. So coordination compounds and periodic properties, these are the two chapters that you have to study well. Because you can literally attempt 24 marks. You can literally get 24 marks almost from these two chapters. Yeah. Please make sure that you, you have everything. Okay. No hurries. I'm only taking care of chemistry. Bacha. How will I take most repeated topics of physics and uh, mathematics? Huh? I don't teach physics and mathematics. I'm not Einstein's granddaughter. Yeah. Chalo, anyway, the explanation is right here and you can check it out. Okay, the explanation is right here. You can check this out later on. Moving on to the next topic that is D block. In D block also magnetic moment and color. Yes, color is also there. Okay, all right. Will other teachers come? No, yes, bacha. Yes, yes. There are Shreya sir takes care of physics and Shreya sir will also be taking care of mathematics uh, previous year questions and he will be solving some of the questions for mathematics as well, right? So you don't have to worry about it. PCM will be solved, will be sorted out here. Don't worry about it at all, okay? All righty, all righty. Where is, where is it that we are? Huh. Okay, so D block, magnetic moment and color. Let's check it out, guys. Now, 
What is the spin only? Oh, I kept the hint right here. What, what is the spin only magnetic moment value of a divalent metal ion? A divalent, that means it is Mn2 plus. Mn2 plus atomic number 25 that, oh, absolutely manganese manganese makes sense manganese has 25 atomic number isn't it divalent means 2 plus that means that it is what 3d5 4 is 2 so 3d5 5 unpaired electrons so obviously 5.92 as I told you the trick is see there are two 5 there are three options that are related to 5 5.26 5.0 5.92 which one will you choose which one will you choose? Will you actually go and find out what is the what is the magnetic moment in Bohr, Bohr magnet or no? Rather, always remember that the number of unpaired electrons and the magnetic moment, the difference between number of unpaired electrons and the magnetic moment is around 0 0.75 or 0 0.8 something, okay? 0 0.75 to 0 0.85 that's the difference between the number of unpaired electrons and the Bohr magneton value is this got is this is this clear guys yes this is a this is a very important trick this is the way you can find out which one is the correct answer without even lifting your pen make sense yep make sense guys clear hai or no clear okay all right Let's move on towards the next question. Yeah, the next question is the set having ions which are colored and paramagnetic both is. Colored and paramagnetic means presence of unpaired electrons, right? Yes, wherever there will be unpaired electron, that is where we will get color as well as magnetic moment. So that means that let's find out. Okay, copper, copper. What is the uh, atomic number for copper? Nick's cousin. Nickel, copper, zinc. So copper is 29. Copper is 29. Bole to it is what? 3D9? No, 3D10. 3D10? 4S1, isn't it? Yes. 3D10, 4S1. 3D10, 4S1. Now if I say that it is uh, Cu2 plus. Cu2 plus means it is 3D9. 3D9 that means one unpaired electron. One unpaired electron will be there. Now check out chromium 3 plus. Chromium is a 24. 24 means 3D5 4S1. 3D5 3D5 4S1 means 3 plus, right? So 1 and 2, 3. It will be 3D3. That means 3 unpaired electron. Yes. Scandium plus. See, scandium plus. Scandium will be what, guys? Scandium will be? Huh? Huh? Scandium will be what? 21. So 21 means, 21 means 3D, 3D1, 4S2. Yes, that means that it will take away the one. So 3D1, 4S1, that means that this also has one unpaired electron. So that means option A is our correct answer. Yes, option A will show both color and paramagnetic moment. Correct? Makes sense everybody? Yes, so option 1, okay? Devansh, I have no inspiration here. Yeah. I just like my hair short because I don't have to comb. And uh, I'm very lazy, you know. I'm very lazy. And, and also, my mom and dad always told me that... Uh, my mom and dad always told me that uh, short hair is great. And uh, whenever I was younger, during my board exams, during my class 10th exam, class 12th exam, they used to make me cut my hair short so that I don't have to waste too much time looking into the mirror and, you know, uh, taking care of my hair and everything. And off lately, I am having very little time. I have to prepare for the sessions. I have to... Uh, do the research what kind of sessions will work for you guys so i i think here is just time consuming so cut it off <laughs> that's why exactly and th this this hair is so great you don't even have to comb i swear to god i did not comb my hair but it looks great isn't it i just took shard and i just like did this and this is how it is it's set for the whole day i didn't have to comb my hair so i really love it i really love short hair also, will you be able to guess what is my age? Hmm? No, right? And if I, what if I tell you that I, I am very old? See, you will never be able to guess what is my age. Exactly. That's why. That's why. 
<laughs> okay, moving on to the next topic, guys. The next topic is P block chemical properties of boron. Yes, please do study it. In P block, there are uh, several important topics. Chemical properties of boron being one. Okay, oxo acids that I have kept, I have been telling you all the time. Oxo acids and xenon compounds, and you will see that these are the most repeated ones. Okay, these are the most repeated ones. You will check it out. So P block chemical properties of boron has been repeated six times, my dear student. And let's solve a question here. The correct statement regarding group 13 elements oxides are boron trioxide is acidic. Oxides of aluminium and gallium are amphoteric. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yes, boron trioxide is acidic. Oxides of aluminium and gallium are amphoteric. Absolutely right. Oxides of indium and thallium are also basic. Absolutely right. Which means that our correct answer is option 1, 1, 2 and 3. All of them are correct. Make sense? Yes. Make sense, guys? Uh, JEE, Bacha, actually, uh, in, in, uh, today, uh, uh, the studios were already booked. Actually, the studios were already booked and I could not find an empty studio. Uh, hence, I'm taking session like this, okay? Yeah. I planned the sessions very uh, late, that's why. From tomorrow, I will be taking the session once again, like that. Gokul, bacha, PDF, I will give it to you. Yeah, but come on, can't you see that I'm taking a session? Huh? How will I send you the PDF right away? I told you I will send it to you and I promise you that. But please understand that I am not just, uh, you know, standing in front of the camera and taking sessions and sending you PDF. I also have other work. I'll send it to you. Don't worry. Yes, Naeem, usually it's like that only. It, usually uh, it's like that when you get the admit card, your uh, center will also be written on it, okay? Your center will also be written on it. Chalo. Moving on, guys, moving on. The next question, everybody. The next question is diborane, okay? B2H6 reacts independently with O2 and H2O2 produce respectively. Aha, we already know. We already know, isn't it option A, B2O3 and whenever D, uh, diborane reacts with H2O, it gives you H3BO3. So option 1 is the correct answer, right? Option 1 is the correct answer. We will tell you all about it, Karthik, don't worry. Yes, we will tell you all about it. As soon as the notification comes, don't worry about it. Shreya sir and I will be there to handle all your doubts, okay? Yes. Moving on from here, next topic is C. I told you, oxo acid of phosphorus, oxo acid of phosphorus and sulfur. They always, always, always ask you this. So it has been repeated eight times. Make sure that you study it well. Please remember the structures. Please remember the structure. Once again, I have taken a session here. I have taken a session here. Let me show you where I have showed you how to uh, remember the this thing, structures. Let me show you. I have taken it. It's a little old session, but I promise you will be able to understand everything from it. Mm, 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 mm. Where is it? 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 Where is P block? P block, P block. Ha, here, this, this part, this part has all the tips and tricks as well. Please do check it out, my dear student. P block one shot part two, okay? P block one shot part two has every little detail. I have also given you the tips and tricks on how to remember the oxo acid. So please don't forget to watch it, okay? Please don't forget to watch it. See, sulfur, sulfuric acid, I've told you. Then uh, here we will go, uh, here we will go a little more. There is decons process, electrolytic process, yes? Acidic nature of hydrogen chloride. See, xenon compounds are also given to you here. Yes, xenon compounds are also given to you. Yes, all of these are there, my dear student. All of these are there, okay? So, you make sure that you just go through this. In fact, you, you know what you can do is just go here, go to this and use the playback. The payback speed, the playback speed, increase it to 1.5 so that you can watch it faster and you can get the whole topic in one go, okay? All right, can you all do this, guys? Can you all do this? Yep, please do that. Please do that, okay? Chalo, moving on, moving on. 
रिपीट एट एट टाइम्स ओके लेट्स डू अ क्वेश्चन हियर इज अ क्वेश्चन टेल मी द ऑक्सो एसिड ऑफ सल्फर दैट डज नॉट कंटेन बॉन्ड बिटवीन सल्फर एटम इज The correct answer is option three. That's because I could an I could answer because I know the structures. However, if you do not know the structure, my dear student, the structures are right here. Okay, the structures are right here. You do not have a bond between sulfur. See in H two S two O three, there is bond between sulfur sulfur here. Okay, H two S two O four sulfur sulfur here. Yes, S S S S H two S four O six here also you have a sulfur sulfur bond. Okay. All right, but H two S two O seven does not contain a bond between sulfur atom, and that's the correct answer. Cool. Moving on to the next question, the pair in which phosphorus atoms have a formal oxidation state of plus three is: is it option one, pyrophosphorus and hypophosphoric acid? Is it option two, uh, orthophosphorus and uh, hypophosphoric acid? Is it pyrophosphorus as uh, and pyrophosphoric acid? Or is it orthophosphorus and pyrophosphorus acid? What is the correct answer? Once again, because I know the answer, because I know the answer, it is option four. But let me tell you how. Okay, let me tell you how. Chalo, let's draw the structure here. Okay, orthophosphorus, right? P double bond O here. Yes. No need, lor. Uh, reduce if I'm in general cut in uh, percentile. No, no. Nothing like that. Who said that? Who told you that? Okay, so this is one structure, and the second one is obviously like uh, this, right? Okay. All right. Now that means that here there is a two minus, two minus, two minus, plus one. Yes, plus one. Correct. Then here there will be again minus one, minus one. So count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Eight minus one and two six. That means three here. And three here, oxidation state understood. Now here, see minus two, minus one, plus one, minus one. Right? That's the bond formation. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and then one plus. So that means this is also three. Yes, formal oxidation state is plus three. That means option four is the correct answer. Does it make sense, guys? Does it make sense? Makes sense or nonsense? Makes sense or nonsense? How to find oxidation number of acids of phosphorus? Puneet, I just calculated right in front of you and I showed you. Did you understand? Did you understand? I just calculated. Know the structures. Knowing the structure is very important. Know the structure and then rest you can calculate like this. Okay? Rest you can calculate just like how I have done it. Okay? All right. ठीक है, guys. Shall we move on? Shall we move on? Is this clear or not, guys? Come on, come on, come on, everybody. Write down. No one is writing it down. A. Sleeping or what? Yes, Agnes has written finally. Somebody. Thank you, Sandeep. I'm starting in 11th standard and I feel tough. Up. Mr. Lokar, you don't worry. We will be starting with our 11th. Uh, you know, we will be starting with a new academic session, and I promise things will go very simple and easy. Don't worry about it at all. Okay? Don't worry about it at all. and when we start with the new academic session we will also make sure that we do not do one shot we will go two to three topics per day and that will make things even more simpler okay don't worry about it bachcha anyway moving on to the next topic guys the next topic is solution aha we know that right yes abelioscopic constant cryoscopic constant those question those questions and 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 tf and tb these kind of question ha questions have come eight Time. So here is a question for you. Let's figure it out. Molar depression constant for a solvent is 4.0 k kg per mole. The depression in the freezing point of the solvent for 0.03 mole per kg, and the solution is K2S4. Okay. If the solution is K2S4, obviously we will have to figure out what is I. Yes. And even before that, what is the formula that we know? We know that delta T F is equal to 
आई के एफ इंटू आई के एफ इंटू एम राइट वॉट इज आई आई इज द वेंट ऑफ फैक्टर हाउ विल फिगर आउट आई सी के टू एस ओ फोर विल ब्रेक डाउन टू टू के प्लस प्लस एस ओ फोर माइनस इज इंट इट सो हियर आर टू आई ऑन हियर इज वन आई ऑन दैट मीन्स आई इज इक्वल टू थ्री आई इज इक्वल टू थ्री सो दैट मीन्स दैट थ्री इन टू के एफ इज गिवन मोलल मोलल डिप्रेशन कॉन्स्टेंट इज गिवन टू आर सो दैट इज फोर इन टू एम इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री कैलकुलेट दिस हाउ मच विल यू गेट थ्री इंटू फोर ट्वेल्व फोर थ्री जर फोर थ्री जर ट्वेल्व ओनली राइट ट्वेल्व इंटू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री हाउ मच विल बी द आंसर गाइज हाउ मच विल बी द आंसर प्लीज टेल मी अफकोर्स वी वेल समबडी टेल मी द आंसर गाइज I am very bad at mathematics. Please, you tell me. Zero point three six. Very good. It is option two, isn't it? Option two is the correct answer. See, so easy, so simple, so easy. If you if you would have seen this, if I did not tell you that this has come in two thousand nineteen May, and you would have been like, ma'am, what you are kidding around, ma'am? J in J they will not ask this question, but they have done. They have. Super simple, super easy, isn't it? Yes. and we can also solve it like this in a snap anyway moving on to the next question and the next question is chemical kinetics yes rate equations are always always asked baba rate equation will always be asked once again eight times it has been repeated okay eight times it has been repeated okay yes so let's go let's check it check it out an organic compound undergoes first order decomposition okay so for first order decomposition what do we know guys for first order what is the equation for first order we know that it is kt is equal to ln of a not divided by a isn't it is that right where a not is basically nothing but the initial concentration correct hai na and this is this is a uh, concentration at time t at time t right right everyone isn't it rakesh could be could be we don't know that okay we don't know that could be they may repeat but very doubtly i'm pretty sure that they will ask you in the same line of question the same line of question the same topics they will follow but uh, exactly repeating the question that does not really happen that won't happen okay anyway now they're saying that the time taken for its decomposition is 1 by 8 and 1 by 10 okay the time taken for decomposition is 1 by 8 1 by 10 of its initial concentration okay initial concentration are t half and t 10 t 1 by 10 respective t 1 by 8 and t 1 by 10 respectively now what is the value of t 1 by 8 divided by t 1 by 10 into 10 chalo let's calculate it calculate it okay so now we know that k t 1 by 8 if i do then what will i get i will get ln a not divided by a 1 by 8 no not a 1 by 8 a a by 8 clear is that right is that right guys one a, yes that means that i can write it as ln of 8 correct yes now from here what will i do is i will also have to find out kt 1 by 10 right 1 by 10 will be what very good very good you guys have figured it out well done but let me let me also show you for the students those who have not figured out a by 10 yes which means that it will be ln of 10 yes now as per the question what is it writing t1 by 8 divided by t1 by 10 into 10 so that means what do i have to do t1 by 8 divided by t1 by 10 which is equal to nothing but ln of 8 divided by ln of 10 this i can write it as a 3 log 2 which is nothing but what 3 into 0.3 remember in the very recently i have done a tips to remember i have done i have done this and i told you that log 2 is asked often in your exam remember the value of log 2 so value of log 2 is 0.3 so 3 into 0.3 is my dear student 9 i also have to multiply it with 10 so sorry 0.9 into 10 is equal to 9 correct yes righto done it correctly 
done it correctly by guys absolutely right well done well done well done acha now let's go for organic general organic chemistry uh, in from general organic chemistry aromaticity resonance acidity and basicity have been asked eight times so once again you have to make sure that all of these you study let's do a question here is a question in the following compound the favorable sites for protonation is or are see protonation when will protonation be easy and simple protonation will be easy and simple when the when the lone pair is when the lone pair is easily available that means it's not a part of conjugation correct yes lone pair has to be easily available it should not be a it should not be conjugated right is that what yes kartik if you prepare from if you prepare from the pyqs uh, even from for je level bacha pyqs sample paper and mock papers are actually the way to go for preparation you don't have to learn all the concept you have to make sure that you know how to solve the question yep that's what you are supposed to do so you are absolutely right correct so now here if i see that see in this case in the a case there will be a lone pair yes this will easily be conjugated so that means a is definitely not not, not present a is definitely not a favorite site for protonation right now same like this i can also see for e see for e also i can see that the lone pair that is here this will also be given here yes that means e is also a not site but for the b site for the c site for the d site it will be easily available because you see right here right next to the lone pair there is also double bond right next to the lone pair there is a double bond right, ne uh, right next to the lone pair there is a double bond and because of the double bond what will happen the lone pair is easily available so it will be the favorable site for protonation that means option 2 b c d is the correct answer make sense nonsense guys make sense or nonsense super easy super simple yes very good very good very good okay all right makes sense great great okay next question guys next question acha which of the following molecule is least resonance stabilized what do we know about resonance yeah uff oh, we know that aromatic nonsense a hey, cyber lord <laughs> now we know that aromatic compounds are resonance stabilized they either follow the huckel's rule or they follow what that 4n plus 2 rule right 4n plus 2 rule now we can see that this one this one this one all of them are aromatic this is not so option 4 is definitely the correct answer am i right am i right huh am i right am i right once again easy peasy biryani tasty epbt rithik we will start for the j 2025 a little later bacha let's be in present currently 2023 april attempt is coming up so let's focus a little bit on april 2023 <laughs> yeah okay all right very simple very easy acha if you want to go through the explanation the explanation is right here i'll be sending you the pdf don't worry okay you can check it out hai na you can check it out chalo next question bacha log arrange the following compounds in the order of decreasing acidity acha what is acidity what is acidity if i ask you what is acidity ha huh? you will tell me that my acidity is basically basically easy way to donate protons right no easy way to donate ha huh? h plus ions only exactly easy way to donate h plus ions now what are the things that we know the basics that we know is if if there is if there is what are you writing taking eno why are you taking eno as a hey! <laughs> making fun ah huh? don't go for you know advertisement guys don't go for you know advertisement anyway what i was telling you was that acidity is the capacity to donate h plus ions or or the easier way they donate h plus ions okay the more easy way they donate h plus ions the more acidic will be the compound correct yes now we know that <laughs> yes the, now we know that the electron releasing group right the electron releasing group they will give electron yes if there is an electron releasing group they will give electron when they give electron the electron density in o electron density in o will increase 
and if the electron density in O increases to to uh, to compete with that, H plus ion will have to stick. H plus ion will not be easily donated. Yeah, understanding, guys. If you have an electron releasing group, what did I say? If you have an electron releasing group, then they will give electron. They will give electron. When they give electron, the electron density will be higher on the oxygen. If it is higher on the oxygen, then hydrogen will also have to make it stable, right? To make it stable, it will not be donated easily. And vice versa happens. If there is an electron withdrawing group, when it withdraws, what happens? The electron density on oxygen reduces. When it reduces, then H plus ion will be easily given out. Now, from this basic thing that we know, we know that Cl, chlorine actually goes for both the effects. Chlorine can go for electron withdrawing, electron releasing as well, but more so electron withdrawing. Overall, it shows electron withdrawing. Now, when it shows electron withdrawing, what will it do? The electron density in O will be less. That means that H will be donated. So that means that the first one will be acidic. Am I right, my dear student? The first one will be acidic. But take a look at CH3. Is CH3 electron withdrawing? Aha! This is an electron releasing group. When it releases electron, what will happen? This will be less acidic. Okay. This will highly be hardly be acidic. But here NO2, it is an amazing, amazing electron releasing group. Yes, it is an amazing electron releasing group. So what will happen? Maximum acidic, maximum acidic, my dear student. Yes. And then this, this will also be very less acidic. Okay, very less acidic. CH3, same because electron releasing and electron releasing. Okay. So that means that it is 3, 1, 2, 4. 3, 1, 2, 4 is option 3. Correct? Option 3 is the correct answer. Am I right? Option 3 is the correct answer, hai na? Yes, guys. Option 3 is the correct answer. Great. Makes sense. Okay. Now you are you're talking my language. Awesome. Last, we will go to environmental chemistry and in, from environmental chemistry, the most important topic is smog. Although environmental chemistry is a very easy peasy biryani tasty chapter. However, smog is that one topic which has been repeated five times. So, make sure that you study it a little bit. So, here is a question for you. The correct set of species responsible for the photochemical smog is? Ah, we know this answer, isn't it? We know that it is option C. NO, NO2, O3 and hydrocarbons. That's the correct answer. Right, everybody? Yes? Right, guys? Yes. So, that's it. That's it for today. With this note, everybody, I'm going to end the session for today. I hope that you all have loved the session. Please do not forget to watch the things that I have told you. Also, in the last, uh, this thing, we have made some sessions like this where... Uh, in 20 to 30 minutes, we have covered the whole chapter. Yes, you can see. See, see, see. In 26 minutes, I have completed the whole P block. Yeah. In uh, periodic, pro uh, periodic properties, in 23 minutes, I have completed the whole periodic table properties. Yeah. Then you see coordination compound has been completed in 27 minutes. DNF block has been completed in 21 minutes. Guys, please go through this. Please, please, please go through this. Okay. I promise. I promise you will be able to get 99 percentile. Also, this is something that I've recently started. Don't forget to, don't forget to check out these shots. I promise you will be able to be much, much, much better in your organic chemistry, especially if you remember this, okay? Especially if you remember all of this. So with this note, everybody, I'll take a leave from you all. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends as well because I promise it will help them to know how many times which topic has been uh, repeated is very essential. It will help you to plan your chemistry uh, strategy even better. Okay. With this note guys, bye-bye. See you all and uh, have a nice day ahead. Bye.